welcome to Market Savvy Conversations. My name is Megan Walker and our very special guest is Natalie Jack, who delivers supervision training for allied health professionals. Hi, Natalie. How are you? Hi, Megan. I'm well, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm looking forward to this conversation because you have made some incredible leaps forward in your business and your practice and what you deliver. So I think everyone listening will be really interested to hear how you've moved from the traditional world of allied health now into delivering your amazing services. So do you want to kick off by telling us a bit about you and your background? Yes, absolutely. Happy to do that. Um, well, my my background is in, in creative therapy, specifically music therapy. So I started my career as a music therapist many, many years ago. Um, and over my career, I've worked in various places. Mental health really has been my main um, area and, and did some study in mental health. So um, and always, I guess, you know, supervision has been something in the background for me that has been important. And at, through my career, I, I progressed to doing study and having lots of experience in supervision. Supervision, and now that's the main, the main thing that I do is offer supervision to individuals and groups, and also offer supervision training. So that's a little bit about the fantastic the journey. Yeah. And how long has it taken you from? Like, when did you come up with the idea of, hey, this is what I want to move towards, and go a little bit deeper into the steps that you took to make that change into now your new offering into the supervision training mm. specifically yeah okay it look it did take me a while i think from the initial <laughs> thought years ago probably oh, i don't know you know kind of the pandemic has put a two-year gap in everything but i reckon probably five years ago i had the idea that you know i might have something to offer here um and i've i've done some good trainings with other trainers and i'd love to be able to con kind of consolidate it and, and offer something specifically for allied health but also for other health professionals and like a general offering so it took me quite some time and what i did is i got permission from an expert that i had trained with to incorporate some of their material and that was provided and then and then i had a bit of a hiatus because the pandemic happened and my focus was on different things and then and part of that thought process for me too was a little bit of that imposter syndrome worried about do i have something to offer are people going to want this and the other important thing obviously is are people going to want to pay me for it so i had all those humps to get over myself my own thoughts um, and eventually i just thought okay i've got to do it if i don't do it i'll be kicking myself forever and so i just i went ahead and i did it and you might remember megan that i've you know i've done things a little bit around the opposite way to what you what you teach but for me it seemed to be the best way to do it yeah absolutely i must have met you at about that time where you were you know having a few of those slight self doubts yes. and i remember i'd heard your name everywhere and everyone oh. raving about how amazing you are oh and then and then i remember thinking you know and you, you might have been you're just going oh you know i wonder if i wonder if and that conversation of do it do it, you know, <laughs> just get into it. And you have you have put so much in place in what what probably feels like a long time, you know, but you're doing so well. So tell us what it is that you offer now and what are you working on at the moment? Okay. So what I offer now is a, a generalized five day comprehensive supervisor training course. So it's yeah, five days online at this stage, but of course I can now that restrictions are easing a bit, I can do in person as well, which I'm very excited about. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a live five day training for supervision. So it covers basic practices and, and theories and it covers advanced techniques. It also covers introduction to ethics in practice and group supervision as well. So that's mm, what I'm really? offering. Yeah. So I've offered... I've completed one course of that and I'm, I'm in the middle of another one at the moment um, and I've had some lovely feedback, which is great. So that's what I'm offering at the moment. What I would like to do, what I'm working on for the next phase is really exposing as many allied and other health professionals as possible to this opportunity um, because I feel like there's a gap there for allied health, especially in other health to to do really good allied health training, basic training, uh, not sorry, supervision training basic supervision for allied health yeah and tell me more about that like what are the benefits that they get out of your five-day course but then more broadly like what are the bigger benefits you can get out of being a supervisor 
Okay, so the story is in a lot of professions in among in the allied health and other other health professions is a lot of us just go and end up in a supervisory role without getting any training. So what we rely on is the experience from our own previous supervisors as a student or as a professional, and we don't necessarily get the training to know what we're doing. And so we kind of and I was in this position 20 years ago into being uh, asked to be a student supervisor so the one of the benefits is actually grounding your knowledge and getting that oh yeah I do do those things but now I can put it in a structure you know I can Mm -hmm. actually see where I can put all the things together that I've already been working on then there's others that think they might like to supervise in the future but don't have skills and would be wondering you know how do I get those basic skills where do I start so that's the kind of gap I think it's filling in the professions yeah yeah and when you ran your five day what were the two or three like standout moments for you where you went I'm really I'm really nailing this like they're loving this bit but this is the bit that they're going that they've all leaned into and gone thank you Natalie like what were some of those there were a couple of those I'll have to think probably the structure that I provided so the the steps to take the way to actually hold and structure the supervision session um some of the yes some of the real concrete techniques to to structure it was one of the biggest things um another one of them was probably the the learning cycles you know so how we learn in supervision because supervision is talked about like a learning partnership so I teach that learning cycle and different things that happen at each stage it was really like a light bulb moment for a few of the students in that in that time um and I guess the other thing is the ethics the discussion of ethics was really important for people because a lot of the students were thinking of ethics as big deals, you know, really big problems that are terrible. But through our discussions, they were like, oh, actually, you know, there's this ethical issue that's a tinier thing, but I actually didn't realise that was an ethical issue. So it's kind of getting people's radars in that place where they can have that ethical thinking in the background when they're working with people so that they can identify and help their supervisees tackle some of those things. So, yeah, there were a few moments where people were like, wow, this is going to really help me, which I was really pleased about. I love that. And there's nothing like formal training to really just nail your skills and then the confidence, I imagine, as well for the for your participants coming out of it. Even if they sort of knew it, they've now got it all together in one place, but the confidence to go out and add this as a product service yeah. offering yeah. and go and market it and and they can then do it with confidence. And yeah, for those that had been supervising, as I was saying, they really could consolidate and go, oh, I do that, but not exactly in that way. And now I know why I'm doing it and I can add these things together. So it really, yeah, a lot of the feedback I got that it really pulled everything together for them, even if they'd been supervising for years and allowed them to be more confident and put those things in place. So it was a nice, it was a nice feeling to have that. That's what I wanted. Yes. Yeah, I can tell that this is your vision. So what's the bigger picture? What are you what are you um growing and building and what's what's it looking like? Oh my goodness. Well, the big the dream is to be <laughs> able to offer supervision training to as many people as possible so that as many clinicians as possible can get high quality supervision. You know, so I provide supervision individually, but I also do this training because I want more supervisors to be trained. And the more supervisors who are trained and can provide high quality supervision, the more clinicians can get high quality supervision. They can be looked after in their pro- professions and their roles, and then they can do better work for their clients. Yes. So that's the goal. I want just as many professionals to be able to access really good quality training, which is what I hope I provide and and to get it out there. And I'd love to be invited by, I don't know, organizations to come and deliver training for their organization and, and to do that for people because I really, I really, I'm a little bit excited about supervision. You, I love it. And you're so confident. You're just glowing. You've <laughs> two short years you've gone from I don't think I can do this to you you are doing it. How good I'm is that? Yeah, and I just <laughs> I want to just have people know it's available so that they can ha- have choices of, of being trained and becoming more confident supervisors. Fantastic. I call that sort of period of from idea to doing it that you've heard me say this crossing the desert. You know, I went through that for two, three years, you know, selling time by the hour, consulting, not dissimilar to how many health practices run yeah. to now having courses and programs. What um, what would you say to people um, who are considering moving from selling time to having a product? And what are some things you learnt crossing the desert? Okay, well, that's oh, that's 
such a good question. I would, excuse me, I would say obviously be confident and help get someone on your side like yourself or like other clinicians, you know, supporters who can help you be confident to stop, to start that first step into the desert, I guess, you know, and I think doing it gradually is a really good idea. And like you teach to get one course ready, really solid, a small thing to start with. That's what I would say is what is your niche? What is the thing that you glow about and mm. get a, either a course or a, even a workshop or a, a document, you know, a book, something like that and test the waters and get it out there because then you'll have that time to practice all the things you need to do on a small scale. You know, and I dove into straight away the five day thing and you know, like I said, that's- I love it. <laughs> but I really, if I had thought of it years ago or I got the help years ago, maybe I would have done something small just to practice those things first. Mm. And then you've still got your practice and I still have my practice. I see lots of supervisees every week and I'm going to continue to do that because it's my passion. I love supporting supervisees. Um, but this is, yeah, I'm going to kind of grow it, I guess, as I go and do more and more of the teaching, hopefully to be able to, as I said, um, expose the, the training to as many people as possible, but definitely start, start, just start. do it, do something, you know, and I think, as I was telling you earlier, I have, I started with getting all my beautiful artwork done, which is not what you recommend. And I'm sorry to have to say that to all you, but I know you're supportive anyway, but I, to, to me, it motivated me. I got some beautiful artwork done. And then I could launch and get all that stuff and then I could fill in the gaps of the rest of it. And it was a little bit stressful, but the way it motivated me and got me to do it after so long thinking about it was the right way for me. Um, you know, given my time again and doing it a sensible way, I would start with something smaller, but start and do something you're passionate about that's small so you can practice the steps. Yeah. That's the kind of advice, I guess. I love that. And how important is it having a vision? Oh, it's the number one thing because if you don't have a vision it's like not having a destination how do you know how you're going to get there you know and yeah. i talk a lot about that in supervision with my supervisees like you know tell me what you really want what is your if the world was magic what would that be yeah. and if we don't know what the destination is how do we plot how to get there so that vision mm -hmm. that i've been thinking about for so long it when i really sat down to do it it guided me because i just wanted people to learn supervision and be good supervisors and it can yeah. be basic like that yeah, I love, I just love that. And I, I'm going to muck this saying up, but there was something I heard the other day about, you know, when you're, when you go into something like, I'm going to develop this product and I'm going to make lots of money. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with money because that makes things possible. But if it's just kind yeah. of that one lens, it's like a linear straight path. And it feels like that, that doesn't have an end point, that path. Yeah, yeah. But when it has a circle attached to it of I'm growing and I'm giving and I'm growing yeah. and I'm giving, there's a glow. And, a, and like a sustainability to it isn't there. Absolutely. And I think that's really lovely. And, and in those tough times, you know, for me, it's like health equity. You know, I, I see, I talk to so many practice owners who are burning out. And I think if you've got a product, then you can move from selling. But like that for me is yes. let's get health into everyone's hands. Telehealth makes that possible, you know, yada, yada. That's my kind of like man on a tough day where you, you get some weird phone calls and a couple of strange things happen. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know the sky falls in it's like well hang on why are we doing this what's the bigger purpose tap back in and it just fuels you doesn't it absolutely and a lot of health professionals are not all about making money in fact most of the people i work with are not about right. making money and they we have all these conversations about oh i don't want to charge or whatever and i know you've spoken to health professionals like that too but the way i describe it is You've got to have money to do good things so you can charge what you're worth. Don't go out and rip people off. Of course, I'm not suggesting that. And we talk no. about, you know, why do you do your business? And for me, I, I explain it that there's 50% of the reason I do my business is so I can earn some money. So I'm not living in a cardboard box and I can help people. And the other 50% of why I run my business is because I'm passionate about good service. I'm, compa I'm passionate about good supervision, which leads to you know, healthy clinicians, and that leads to then good outcomes for clients. And that's actually 50% of why I'm doing what I do. And it's okay to charge money because if I charge money, I can then go and do things like travel to different places to give subsidized things or, or whatever. And because I run my own business, I can make those choices. So yeah, so I for me, it. I've been able to rationalize it. And I came from that too. I hated charging. Oh, what do I do? Yeah. <laughs> it's so hard, but I've got to remember that, you know, it is for the greater good. I'm not just ripping people off for the sake of it you know there really is a, a, a vision there for helping people which is why a lot of us go into health in the first place oh good tell us how can people get in touch with you if they want to check out your programs well they can go to successfulsupervision.com my little sign <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> and that one will link to my regular website. So all my information is there. So successfulsupervision.com and uh, people can find me. Fantastic. Any parting words of wisdom for the um, clinicians who are listening? What do you think for people who are considering, you know, I want to change. I want to get another income stream like supervision or an online course. Like what would you say to those people? Oh, what I would say is get help and pay for help with the parts that you're not confident with. And for me, that absolutely, that's the marketing and I'm getting your help and I'm still learning. I'm always going to be learning. So it's get help with what you need help with, whether it's graphic design or business or the money side of it, whatever it happens to be, you can get the help and it will, it'll, you know, it'll be okay in the end, pay a small amount of money to learn the skills and get what you need and go forward. And, and of course, just start, you know, reach out, start the process and ask others for help and you'll get there. I love it. Invest in yourself and back yourself. Yes. Oh. Right. So many people said that to me and, you know, here I am now saying it to other people. So we all need someone to push us along, I think. Glowing. I love it. So good <laughs> I to love see you. I talking about this. Can you tell? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're so lit up. I love it. It's great. Thank you so much, Natalie. I love this conversation. It's just motivating. You know, we we all have great ideas and there's ideas in us and it's like we, we need to hear from people like you who put the hard work in and are doing it and it's working and, and that's really encouraging for others. Yeah. So thanks so much for your time. I'm scared anyway. It's still okay to do it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, exactly. Feel the fear. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Nat. Okay, bye. <laughs> bye.